This is Gardening in America, and I'm Ed Hume. Today we're in Santa Fe, New Mexico, in an extraordinary garden. And I'm with the gardener and inventor, Donna Bonner. Donna, when was this garden established? This garden that we're standing in at this time was actually, the planting was completed at the end of June last year, amazingly. You're it's kidding. It's alakazam beautiful. is what I call it. I guess. And uh, the lower part of the garden is seven years old. And three years ago, this piece was bought and this garden was designed and installed over a period of a year and a half time. It's the amazing. The grasses above are gorgeous. <clears throat> and they continue to be through the winter. Is that right? It's fabulous. We just leave them on. We leave everything on and all through the fall and the winter and then early spring we come and, and cut back everything. In this garden also I noticed what has been used is a lot of texture and color in foliage alone and that's probably <clears throat> makes it for a year-round garden that's extraordinary. Totally. Yes. And it gives so much uh, variation that's happening all the time. Yes. You know I noticed also in the garden there are some beautiful art pieces. Uh, Tell us a little bit about them. The, the folks who own this garden and um, have, have had a great part in making it what it is go travel the world and they bring back and uh, send back pieces from all over the world. There is a huge crystal here from Siberia. You oh, see wow. it down there. Sure. Uh, many pieces that are uh, from uh, uh, Indonesia, India, Thailand, many rocks and gems. Wow. They're Incredible. Outsta it's outstanding. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that you're an inventor as well. And I know in your work here in the garden that you found a need to create some fertilizer and, and kind of a soil amendment that would be of value to home gardeners. Tell us about it. Our viewers would love that. Well, when I started gardening um, here in Santa Fe, I'd come out of Mississippi and Louisiana where everything was so simple. Sure. And here, there's no humus, and the soil is very is is almost dead in sure. many places. So I began to wonder how to put together something that was going to begin to build soil, and started working with the ingredients that are in the yum yum mix. Oh. And um, it became the yum yum mix even before. I mean, I was using it years before it ever got in the bag and got on the shelf. Oh. So it's been like a natural progression and uh, it's wonderful now that it can go out to other people and it's been, it works very well in the Southwest. Sure. Ah, thank you for sh yes. not only sharing the beautiful garden with us, but I know our viewers also love to see someone that has, an entrepreneur that has a successful product. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
that's the variegated Hebe. And that's simply all it's called is variegated Hebe. But here's one that I want to share with you that I think is just spectacular. And that is the tricolor. This has been that color all year long. Just beautiful and it has required no pruning. Now, speaking of pruning, here's a plant that does need a little bit of pruning and it's the Dusty Miller. You can see there that it's beginning to go to flower. So let's go back in here a little ways and cut this back. And I'm gonna cut this one back so it's in proportion. See now the entire plant is in proportion and that little bit of printing will make all the difference in the appearance of the garden at this time of the year. And here's something else. See here, this is a marguerite daisy and look at these buds, late as it is in the season, still trying to form. So is what we want to do is to go in and cut off all of these old flowers so that the plant does not go to seed and continues to try to flower. And I think if you have just observed those few things in your landscape, foliage color, foliage texture, and flower color, you can come up with some outstanding plantings. And now's the time to spend a little time observing the garden. We're in Los Alamos, New Mexico, and I'm with Mary Zemak. And she, you kind of practice uh, permaculture, don't you? Yes, and it's been a great success here. We put this permaculture garden in four years ago, and I've already noticed an enormous difference in how much more productive things are and how much less water I'm using here in the desert. And you've only watered this garden, what, about five times this five year? Five times this year. Last year, only three times. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it depends on the weather patterns, of course. I only water when it's necessary. Today, we're going to talk with you about edibles. Yes. And you've picked a, a lot of different types of fruits and some of the greens, too, from the garden. Yes. And you very often make an entire vegetable, or I mean the entire dinner and dessert. Oh, yes. The whole works, don't you? Certainly. I can do that garden. for a great deal of the year. Uh, and the interesting thing about permaculture is that you set things up mainly with perennials so that I could be away for, for example, all of June, and when I come back there's still plenty to eat in my yard oh, wow. because we depend on the perennials so much. Yes. I noticed, for example, you have the grapes here, and I noticed on one of the trees that you have the grapes growing in the apple tree. Yes, I use the apple tree as a trellis. What's one of the things we try to do in permaculture is to stack things so that more than one plant is occupying the same space. Sure. It, uh, you can get a lot done. You can have a ground cover bearing something. I have berries underneath and, and uh, so on. So you can grow two or three or, or four or even space, higher if yes. you want to. Now, let's uh, squash, of course. Well, of course, you know yes, that. You're right. And you've got peppers from the garden. Very few left. This is mid-October, so sure. most of them have died back. Yeah. Pears, it's time to pick the pears now. I have a number of different varieties of apples, um, and it's time to pick them now or the bears will get them. Sure, sure. Uh, Asian pears, I have several varieties of Asian pears, uh, the grapes you saw. Uh, and then, of course, there are all kinds of perennial greens. Yes, oh, uh, wow. The scallions, of course, are there. Uh, we use these eight months of the year. Uh, chives, of, I have a number of different kinds of chives. Uh, parsley, of course you know. Um, do you know um, sweet Sicily? Yes, I that's do. That's lovely yeah, in that's salads. A, oh, isn't it? A great flavor and to it. And the French sorrel, that's the basis of our salads much of the year. It's a wonderful substitute for lettuce in a sandwich. Oh, yeah. And, and the salad burnet, I'm sure you know. Yes. And that's so easy to fix. You just drop it in like that. Yeah, just like that. Wow. And um, this is a, um, a, uh, a fennel. A bronze fennel, which is lovely Ooh, in salads, too. Which is pretty too. in the garden. Yes, yeah. yes. Is this a spinach, for example? No, that's more of the sorrel. Oh, it is more of the yes. sorrel. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And this one? That's the burnet again. Okay. Thank you for sharing this with us. And this has all come from your garden in about And I eight... didn't have to plant it. it yeah. I, I plant it once, and it's there every year, forever and ever. Oh, my. Thanks very much, Mary, for sharing this with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Schizostylus, or the Capra Lily, is one of our plants of the week this week. 
It's a beautiful plant. Looks a lot like a glad, doesn't it? It is a low growing plant, as you can see, but an excellent plant for borders. Now, it likes a little bit of sun, quite a bit of sun, in fact, but a moist soil. And the important thing is that this makes great cut flowers for use in the home at this time of the year, the kaffir lily. Our second plant is the scabiosa. Oh, it's beautiful. This is butterfly blue, this particular variety. Pink mist is another one that's really nice. These are perennials that flower for a long period of time. The important thing always is to cut off the spent flowers on the scabiosa, and then they'll continue to flower and flower and flower. As you can see, lots of buds yet to come. Now, this is also called the pincushion flower, scabiosa and it grows 18 to 24 inches high and does best in full sun, although it'll grow in partial sun and shade too. And then let's talk a little bit about grasses as our plants of the week. This is the dwarf fountain grass, and look at the flower on this one. Isn't that pretty? And this one grows, uh, oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 18 to 24 inches high, so it's a fairly small growing variety. And then this is one that I really like. This is the variegated oak grass, Look at the beautiful foliage color of this one. It only grows two and a half feet high, so you could use it in a perennial border very, very effectively. It does like light shade though, keep that in mind. Now back here next to me is another of the taller growing varieties. This will grow about five to eight feet tall, depending upon where it's grown in the garden, but it's called the maiden grass. And again, the flower plumes on it are great for drying or for cut flowers. And then last but not least, is the porcupine grass. And you'll notice the beautiful variegation in the leaves of that one. And they're available at your local nursery or garden center. The roses have been beautiful this summer, but it's time now to get them ready for the winter months ahead. And if we leave the tall stalks is what happens is that anytime there's a heavy or strong wind, it tends to wind whip the rose, loosening it in the soil. And then if we get a cold spell, that'll freeze all the way to the roots and there's a good chance you'll lose the rose. So to head down the roses in the fall is a good idea. But don't confuse this with spring pruning because that is done and it's more severe. But let's just get started. I'm going to shorten, for example, that cane and I'll shorten this one so that I can get in and work a little bit closer. You'll notice here, this is dead, this cane, so we'll go way down the ground, take it right out. And this is a little bit more difficult to see, but here on the back side is another dead cane. See, so I'll take it out completely, get rid of all that dead stuff. Now, I'm gonna shorten the rest of these canes like about so, just to get them down to a, a reasonable height. And you'll see what's left when I get through doing that, kind of getting this ready, is that there's still some leaves on the rows. Now, is what we must do as we go into winter is to take the time to go in and pick those leaves off and put the plant into dormancy. A little bit later, of course, in the season, um, this probably will freeze back, but still it's important then the, that those leaves be picked off. And the reason why we pick them off is because this particular plant has had trouble with black spot and mildew on it. And we don't want to take any chance of there being leaves on it that are going to carry over into the next season. Now, as I do that, I notice that there's also a few other dead tips at least, so we'll get those off as well. Get those totally off of the rose bush. Now, very important, go in and get rid of those leaves that fell during the summer. Gosh, those are, if and you get rid of them. You don't put them on the compost pile. You completely get rid of them. Send them away with the garbage man or whatever, because those leaves probably have disease problems on them too, and they'll transmit back to the plant itself. So I think I've gotten most of them now, at least in the surrounding area. And we'll just pile a little bit of bark over the base of the canes, usually about six to 12 inches high. If you don't have bark, maybe a good idea would be soil or straw or sawdust or something of that nature to just give that rose a little added protection. And this is a great time now to begin getting your roses ready for the winter months. And I guess in the long run, ready for spring as well.
This is the time of the year when you may want to give a little attention to the garden. Get it ready kind of for the winter months ahead and also maybe for next spring. And this is a plant that it's called Silver Brocade. It's a variety of Dusty Miller. And you can see the tip growth, how oh, it was gorgeous all summer long. But now it's going into the fall season. The, you know, the evenings get a little bit cooler in the mornings as well. And all of a sudden it's getting to look a little bit ratty. So we need to give it a little bit of winter protection. Here, I think I have three plants here. And let me just give you an idea of what we need to do. As you can see, this is all brown here with the tips out here, you know, still kind of nice. But what would happen next year is that this would all be brown and then you'd have the new growth on the tips. And that doesn't make sense, does it? It wouldn't look pretty at all. So, so what we do is to go in here and actually remove this dead growth that's in here. And we'll do it just very quickly to give you an idea, at least on this one plant. A lot of growth here and that's really desirable. But you know what's going to happen? When cutting it back in this method, in this form, is it's going to make an even bushier plant next year. Because where there was one of these stems, there stands to be a good chance that there'll be two or three next year. So it'll make the plant, you know, two or three times bushier. I'm going to pull a few of these on the nearby plant as well, just so you can get a good idea of what I'm trying to accomplish here. Now the other thing about silver brocade is it tends to be a little bit on the tender side. So if the weather gets really cold during the winter, we may want to cover this. And we could do it with bark or, or sawdust, or we could actually even cover it with some type of cloth material during a cold spell. And then as soon as the weather warms up again, is what we would do is to remove that covering. And then if it gets cold again, cover it again. But you can see, it takes me a little while to do this because it's such a nice, beautiful, bushy plant. In fact, these plants were several feet across. And notice here, see new growth already coming, but that's what's going to happen next spring. And that's really why we're cutting this back. Not only to get ready for next spring, but also so that it won't be as large a plant to try to winter. See, now we've got it down basically, I think there's one or two branches here mixed into another plant. But you can see how we've greatly reduced that plant. And now when it comes to winter protection, all I have to do is to cover that. Look how much better that area looks too. And when I get through with those other two plants, you can imagine this plant is really going to look nice for the winter season. So give a little attention to the garden and begin getting it ready for the winter and actually for next spring as well. I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico with world-renowned photographer Charles Mann, who specializes in gardens and people. Charles, what part of Santa Fe are we in? Today we're on Canyon Road, a gallery district, which is one of the more colorful areas of the city where people can come to see a lot of the art that Santa Fe has to offer. And the plant material in this area just makes each one of the pieces stand out, I think. Especially here where we see a lot of ornamental grasses, which everybody knows are becoming more and more popular in the gardening world, and they work well for us, too. And you've, uh, some of the photography that you've done is of this garden, right? As a matter of fact, I have taken some quite lovely pictures here of the beautiful sculpture and up and down Canyon Road uh, frequently because there's very colorful aspects of Santa Fe to be seen here. Yeah. Now, this is a book that you shot, Secret Gardens of Santa Fe, and I want to share it with our viewers because it gives them some great ideas if they ever come to Santa Fe of places to visit. This book is a really fun project for me because I got a chance to take people behind the walls and to show the eclectic and, and curiously colorful aspects of Santa Fe that are not always obvious on first visit. What is special uh, in Santa Fe at this time of the year? Well, it's October and we have our harvest festivals uh, going on. The chilies are roasting, the trees are turning, uh, the, the odor of roasting chili is in the air, uh, apples are being harvested. And this is my favorite time in the year in Santa Fe. It's a real, the patina of autumn is really on the city. The garden market is beautiful at this time, isn't it? It's one of many fun little vignettes that people can experience when they come to Santa Fe, the, the farmer's market. 
You know, I want to take a, a second here to thank you for sharing the gardens with us. We've had a, a great opportunity here to see some beautiful gardens of Santa Fe and, and some unique gardens as well. And uh, also, uh, could you give us a few quick, or our viewers, a few quick tips maybe if they're interested in taking uh, pictures of gardens and, and people too? Oh, certainly. I think the light is the most important element. Any, most photographers will learn that the light gives the quality of the picture. Uh, it's, it's nice to use a good tripod. I think using the same film over and over again gives the photographer a chance to develop an intuition about what the film will do. But mostly, if you want to learn how to take good pictures, just shoot a lot of film and let your heart take you to where you love to be because it's the enthusiasm for your subject that really comes through the camera. Yeah, and a, a professional photographer never takes just one picture, do they? Ne never, never, <laughs> never, never. <laughs> Thanks so much, Charles, for sharing these gardens of Santa Fe with us. They've been beautiful, unique, extraordinary. We really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all the time we have today. Hope you can join me at this same time next time for Gardening in America. And remember, our relationship with the planet today is tomorrow's future. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.